Money Radio. Thank you for joining us. It is always a delight for me to get together with Gerald Salente from the Trends Journal and the Trends Research Institute. Now you can find out more by going to trendsresearch.com or trendsjournal.com. And now is a great time to do it because the 2015 forecast is now available. Gerald, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Sinclair. Thanks for having me on. Oh, thank you. It's always a lot of fun to get together, and particularly this time of year, because you come out with the annual forecast. The 2015 forecast is now available. Yes, it is. As a matter of fact, we just had a conference here in Colonial Kingston, New York, five hours Plus, video is also available for anyone that wants to see it of the top trends of 2015 you know, discussed in detail. Well, we'll discuss some of them today. And we're not really trying to predict the future. Just look at trends that are in place. You, you do analytical work. This is not some, some crystal ball that you have. Uh, I wish we had a crystal ball, but we don't. No, current events form future trends. We're all doing in life what we're doing because of decisions we made. Of course, there are the wild cards, and that's why nobody could predict the future. But you can see the path, the direction it's taking by the current events of today and, and the history of yesterday. One of the major ideas, I think, is that it seems as if we're just kind of losing control of everything. We're not. The people in power are. And uh, it's not only the United States. It's, it's, it's worldwide. And we just don't have bright people running the show. I'm up here in Colonial Kingston, New York. And, um, you know, 90% of our Constitution was taken from the New York Constitution. This was the first capital. And the jurors in this courthouse right across the street from me included John Jay and four other Supreme Court justices. What we used to have was scholars and knowledgeable men and women that were running the country. And now it's a political freak show, as I see it. I'm a political atheist, so I, I look at the politics in this country as many of the people do, and you can see by the polls, uh, and it's a disgrace what they're doing to this nation. Is it that they're just not scholarly or that they've been bought out? Well, it's, it's a combination of the two, because scholarly people that are of noble integrity and morality can't be bought out. There's no price on earth that could buy off a person with courage, dignity, respect, and uh, integrity and passion. So and it all goes together. But can a person with uh, dignity and integrity uh, still get elected in in 2015 or 2014 or 2016 with the money that is so influencing politics now? Well, it makes it, makes it a lot di more difficult, but you, it, it doesn't make sense to run as a Democrat or Republican, as I see it, again, being a political atheist, because the, to me, and I don't mean this sarcastically, they're no different than the, than the Bloods and the Crips. They're murderers and thieves. How many more people do they have to murder in the name of bringing freedom and democracy? And how much more of our money do they have to steal in names of too big to fail or whatever else they want to make up? So it, you can't get elected by you know a, a person of morality because the very nature of what the political parties are are immoral, as I see it, and as the facts present themselves. Let's take a look at uh, the economy, because uh, this affects everybody right in, the, right in the pocketbook. We were talking at one time about the, the big question of whether it's inflation or deflation. Now the question you pose is deflation or depression. Yes, when you go back to the Great Depression, you know, they only talk about the economic end of it re relative to how the people suffered in their 25% plus unemployment. But it was a depression of prices as well. And you could see that depression of prices taking place. And, and again, we've been on top of this right from the beginning. And you can see it with oil prices. Mm -hmm. You know, as we're, as we're closing out uh, the week, you know, we're looking at West Texas uh, crude at you know, $58 a barrel, and, and Brent over there from, you know, OPEC nations and others at $62 a barrel. It was $115 a barrel just six months ago, but it's not only oil. For example, a ton of iron ore, uh, a rebar, re reinforcement rod, mm -hmm. in China is cheaper than a ton of cabbage. The prices of copper, of corn, you're looking at 
you're looking at five-year lows. It has to do with demand. Demand is, yes, there's more supply on the market. Demand is way down. You look at the numbers. China, China has a real estate bubble. It's already burst. If the United States and Europe don't buy, China doesn't make. If China doesn't make, all those rich natural resource exporting countries, like Australia and Canada and Brazil and Bolivia, they're not exporting because China's not buying. So this is a big cycle we're in. Price wars is going to be one of our top trends of 2015. I could get it for your wholesale. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you, you do bring up a big point, though. This is a global economy that we're talking about. China, which had been uh, chugging along so powerfully, now is slowing down. Uh, the eurozone is completely stagnant. And Japan, well, it, it just can't seem to get out of its own way. It, again, when you look at China and you look at Japan, you look at the United States, you look at Europe, everybody's been playing the same game. Look, I've been on your show a lot of years, yeah. and I was saying things that were very unpopular when I was saying them, whether it was about the wars or about the economy. And when, the, when they started this whole scheme of too big to fails and quantitative easing, we came out with a trend alert in 2010 saying – it's a cover-up, not a recovery. They covered up the damage by printing trillions upon trillions of dollars worth of cheap money and record low interest rates. Do you realize that the Federal Reserve has not raised interest rates since 2006? This is unprecedented. In the old days... You know, once upon a time, people used to have a little extra dough. They put it in the bank, and they got interest returned on what they put in the bank, and it was above the inflation rate. Mm -hmm. No more. Now you put it in, you don't get anything. And if oh, you're over there in Europe, they have a thing called negative interest rates. Right. That's right. We'll charge you to keep money in the bank. How crazy is that? That's what I'm trying to say. The whole thing is a Ponzi scheme in front of everyone's eyes, and no one wants to call a spade a spade. We have record low. We have zero interest rates. Why do you think their equity markets are going up? It's because of these companies are buying back their own stock. They're borrowing money cheaply. All the merger and acquisition activity, you could borrow money cheaply. You're looking at merger and acquisition activity in 2014. That's back to 2007 levels. And then now you go back. Again, all things are connected as we forecast trends. You look at what's going on again with oil prices. Do you realize that nearly 20% to 25% of all of the junk bonds in this country are around the energy boom? Oh, yeah. And now they can't afford to, they can't afford to keep up anymore with these low prices? You're going to see a bust happen. And by the way, energy was the signal that called the crash of 1987. And by the way, that's the way I began to make my career. I had forecast the crash of 1987, I said it would happen in January. Mm -hmm. I said it would happen that year. We're looking at very similar circumstances. That's right. You did call the crash of 87. That was in the Wall Street Journal, as I recall. That's right. Yeah. Um, it's such a strange event, though, to have deflation after all that money printing that's gone on. And deflation is, is a real tricky thing. Uh, and the central bankers, I'm not sure, have any tools with which to deal with it. Uh, the idea is that we've, we've called that pushing on a string for the central bankers. What can be done about the, the deflationary environment? Nothing. It has to deflate, and, it ha and that's what they should have done when the panic hit in 08, rather than bail them out. We bailed out people for making bad bets. Period, paragraph, end of story. Doing dirty deals. No, they never. I'm sorry. I have to watch my language. They call it misdeeds or misled. They never call it corruption or lying. Just like with, this, with the CIA thing. They misled. How about they lied to us? Can anybody say that? So what they did with the banking system, they should have let it, the people that made those bad bets, go out of business. It didn't help us at all. We paid for it, and they got richer. 
So there's nothing they could do. And when you mention the word central bank, a central bank was against everything that this government was founded upon. Every election virtually in the 19th century was not to have a central bank. You know, I say six words ruined America. Harvard, Princeton, Yale, bullets, bombs, and banks. That's their business. And the man that sold us out the biggest was the president of Princeton, Woodrow Wilson, who formed the Federal Reserve Bank. They did it on Christmas Eve when Washington was virtually empty in 1913. He brought us the income tax, and he took us to war. And they, Woodrow, you know, this is a guy with a bad attitude. Who named their kid Woodrow? You know, this just shows you the arrogance of these people when I say Harvard, Princeton, Yale. You look at every, every leader in this country at every high level, in every agency, it's the club. And the club is getting rich, and they're making us pay for it with our money and our lives. It, Gerald, i got to follow up on what you said about the CIA and how they have lied to us. What do you think is going to be the fallout from this report on torture? And That just doesn't seem to be an American value. It's not an American value. It's a disgrace to this nation. If Hitler was doing this, boy, if the Iranians were doing this, if the Russians were doing this. Well, we'd have the, the Nuremberg sickness. trials. Oh, exactly. And that's what I would like to see again. Who knew what when? They lied us into war. Look, do you realize Americans paid for the murder of over one million Iraqi civilians? I wonder why they hate us. And do you realize all our soldiers that gave our, their lives, limbs, and minds based on lies, and they roll out this guy Dick Cheney as though he's a credible human being? Why, that CIA report's a load of crap, he says. I say he is. Who's telling the truth? The CIA report? Well, Dick Cheney, I could tell you a story. I did a, a talk for, I, I can't mention the name, but it's one of the top agencies, of, of private agencies in, in, the, in the nation. And the guy went on to tell me how his father, who was a top CIA guy, told a story of how Dick Cheney used to go to Langley, where the CIA operations are. Mm -hmm. And he'd go over to the guys and he'd say to them, boys, thank you very much for the great job you're doing. And he'd go to these young guys and he'd say, do you see anything about Saddam Hussein's weapons of mass destruction? And they said, no, sir, we haven't found anything yet. And he said, Dick Cheney kept going there. You know, when the vice president goes there, it's a big deal. Sure. Until it became the thing, well, sir, we, we think we have something. We think we might have some. In other words, they pressured them into this. The whole system is corrupt. It's immoral at every level. The people know it, Sinclair, when you look at the polls and you see how lowly they look at the, at the, the senators and congressmen. And why shouldn't they? Look at the people who are leading us. To me, it's a freak show. And I could name the names from Pelosi to Lindsey Graham, from Mitch McConnell to Harry Reid, from, from Obama to Clinton to Bush. These are not my leaders to me, speaking only for myself. They are traitors to everything this nation was founded upon. The nation that made this the envy of the world, the land of opportunity, has been stolen from us by people fulfilling their psychopathic and sociopathic mental disorders. I've got more to talk about with Gerald Salente, and you really need to read the Trends Journal. The December edition of the Trends Journal has the forecast for 2015, a first look at the critical trends that will affect all of us. And if you'd like to get a head start on 2015, uh, this is how you do it. You read the Trends Journal. In fact, read the Trends Journal every month. It's just marvelous, marvelous information, incredible insight. You can find out more at trendsresearch.com or trendsjournal.com. Trendsjournal.com or trendsresearch.com. And be sure and check out the 2015 forecast. We've got more with Gerald Salente in just a moment. Money Radio, thank you so much for joining us. We're talking with Gerald Salente. He is from Trends Research, trendsresearch.com, and the Trends Journal. Now, the Trends Journal is now printed monthly, 
And that's good. You used to do it quarterly. Now you're really busy, Gerald. (laughs) And the 2015 forecast is now available. And if you want to know what's going to happen in 2015, the best place to find out is the 2015 forecast from Trends Journal. It's, It's always just remarkable how accurate Gerald Salente really is. We were talking about the lies of the CIA. We were talking about the manipulation of the central bankers in the economy. But really, we look around, Gerald, and it seems as if every single market, I mean from LIBOR to derivatives to the metals markets, on and on and on. And you talked about the financial engineering, the stock buybacks and all that that's going on in the stock market. Everything is rigged. Matter of fact, that's one of our top trends written by, by the way, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, the former assistant treasury secretary under Ronald Reagan. And it's the grand manipulation. I mentioned to you that current events form future trends, and the history of what happens helps us show what the future is going to look like. But with this grand manipulation going on, it makes it very difficult for us because of the lies that keep coming out. So, for example, I would have thought the economy would have collapsed two years ago. I don't know all the dirty deals going on, like you mentioned, rigging the Forex markets. What are we talking about? Oh, $5.3 trillion a day? A day. When you look, a day. When you look at the LIBOR market rigging the interest rates, it's been rigged to the tune of over $700 trillion, with a T, dollars. You look at this, these record low interest rates. You look at the quantitative easing. They're making this stuff up. So, yes, it's the grand manipulation and lies coming out constantly. You know that saying, the fish rots from the head down. Mm -hmm. If they're lying and cheating from the top, they're robbing us blind, and you want to play it straight? That's what they mean when they say the fish rots from the head down. We don't have morality and integrity and courage and self-respect. So the people are mirroring what Washington and the rest of the major nations are mirroring. So the people are a reflection in many ways of the leadership. And that's why you're seeing this grand manipulation at the level that's going on, right from the top all the way down to the auto mechanic, down to the bottom. I don't mean the auto mechanic being the bottom. I'm talking about, you know, throughout society. Yeah. Well, and throughout society, what can we do to combat this? I mean, this is big stuff. Other than individually acting with morality and integrity, how do we proceed? That's it. It stops right there, as I see it. Individuals. When enough individuals find that courage, dignity, passion, integrity, and self-respect, they don't take it from other people. And when enough of those people get that into them, then the system changes. To me, that's when everything changes. By the way, on May 2nd, 2015, we're launching Occupy Peace from the historic four corners of the United States, the only place where there's a pre-revolutionary war stone building on each corner right here in Colonial Kingston. And Occupy Peace is going to be honoring thy founding fathers, who Washington among them, in his farewell address, a real warrior, not one of these guys that plays commander-in-chief, plays golf and drives pickup trucks, and couldn't fight their way out of a paper bag, a warrior, in his farewell address, no foreign entanglements. And as you well know, the world was at war back then. Jefferson, Madison, Franklin, Adams, every one of the founding fathers, no foreign entanglements. So Occupy Peace is a movement to bring home the troops, close the bases, seal the borders, and rebuild America. A work projects administration program for the troops of our nation to fight for the survival of America and not being sent to fight wars based on lies and immorality. So that's a movement that we're going to be pushing Uh, when you say, how can we change it? I'm looking forward to it, and I'll make one prediction. I'll continue to follow the Trends Journal into 2015, and we'll check in again as we get closer to Occupy Peace. TrendsJournal.com, TrendsResearch.com. Check out the 2015 forecast from Gerald Salente. It's really worthwhile, and it's a bundle of fun. Gerald, all the best for 2015. Thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you, Sinclair, and all the best to you and all your audience out there. 